you know, is typical or what would be expected of a system that's about to go and uh, release some of its energy. Now, it might not, okay, 25, 148, let me see. 25, 148. Um, let's see. I can nail this. I missed it. That is the largest pulse I have been able to find. <laughs> that is outrageous. And you know, you should see the data that comes out with this. When you see the graphs of like electron production and negative ion production and all this, everything just peaks right up. It's outrageous. Look at the deformation that is going on on the surface of the sun. Look at these bumps. It's like completely warping the surface of the sun. That is a lot of energy. That is a lot of energy. Why do you think? Like I said, I think that the sun is going through its cycle where it's actually starting to uh, become unbalanced because it's going too slow for the amount of energy in it and it's starting to get ready to release some of that energy and you know the result would be you know huge energy would be released into a solar system which we're experiencing right now our weather is going to change it's going to get real hot you know um, and as well uh, the, uh, the plasma that's ejected could easily reorganize in smaller planets and, and change the dynamics of the planets together. So there's many things that can happen there. Well, um, there's not that much more to say about Jupiter either than that hotspot has been growing for the last year and a half. And, uh, I'm with, and it's, it, at this point, it's emitting a lot of energy in x-ray and infrared and all this. It's not <coughs> visibly ignited yet, like it's not doing fire yet, but it's getting hotter and hotter and it's getting bigger and bigger very quickly, especially as the sun is going more berserk. And that's like never been seen before. No, they, and they have no explanation for it. If, if, if Jupiter is actually in the process of igniting, Do you think that there's, there's a possibility of a, of a sympathetic vibration between the sun and, and, and uh, Jupiter to actually uh, uh, bring that about? Create a balance? Yeah. It it's could be. Away, but yeah. It's a lot of energy, too. Yeah, it's a lot of energy, and they're two fairly large objects, and they both output a lot of energy. Jupiter outputs 90% more energy than it receives from the sun from some kind of internal energy source, which I believe is a black hole. So, um, yeah, definitely all objects, you know, are always in sympathetic resonance to each other and all always tend towards stability and equilibrium. So there would be a, a reorganization of the sympath sympathetic relationship between the two. Um, 
Yeah, it's similar to an electron going to the next orbit, the next shell. It's similar to uh, a, a, a quasar becoming a galaxy. Uh, it's similar, you know, it's that pulse that occurs, you know, that pulse of life, the, the Big Bang is another example of it, if you'd like, you know? And so um, it is a fractal, the fractal relationship actually you can find everywhere. And, and, and most, and all of the dynamics and all the systems we see in the universe would be a result of that pulse uh, and interestingly, recently, we have, for the first time, have been able to get data of what our solar system looks like inside the galaxy. And uh, they uh, were surprised to find that our solar system is in the middle of a bubble of nothingness in our galaxy, meaning all the material around our solar system seem to have been pushed away on the edge of our of our far from our solar system. And uh, they don't know why. The only thing they could come up with was that a supernova must have blasted right beside our sun that pushed all this stuff out. But uh, that doesn't make sense because if a supernova went off beside our sun, then we would have got pushed out with the rest of the stuff. And our sun is right in the middle of that bubble. So the only thing that could have done that was our sun doing the pulse and pushing all the stuff out. And when it did that, most likely, that's what generated all the plasma necessary to generate our planets. You see? And so now it's about to go to uh, do another of these pulses. Now it could be a much smaller pulse. It could be a micro pulse in a fractal of larger pulse. You guys see what I mean? So it could fluff off just enough energy, release enough energy by doing these pulses so that eventually it regains balance and goes back to normal. But even if it was minor in terms of the amount of the energy of the sun that would be released, it would still be a major, major event to people of Earth. Uh, and certainly we would start to observe a new quality of luminosity of our sun. Uh, because when it does that, and interestingly, if it really does this, it's not unconceivable to think that it might actually uh, become clear. Uh, I mean, that the, the, you know, now there's that, that many sunspots on the sun, some of them are like 10 times the size of the Earth. There's a lot of black on the sun, right? Now, if it blew enough plasma, it could actually expose its black hole nature. And uh, that'd be cool because it proved my theory. But in any case, uh, if it did, um, it's not unthinkable that we would get three days maybe, of darkness with no sun while it is regaining balance and before it starts emitting electromagnetic light again, right? Um, uh, within the network of people that you, that you work with, uh, are there any activities to kind of mobilize human consciousness to tap into per se the, the consciousness that's happening with the sun to help you know, understand the dynamics of the, the movement and how can we on Earth, since we are all our synchronicity, uh, synchronic points, to facilitate a good, easy movement so that we don't explode. As I hear you, I'm asking myself, well, is the sun going to explode and push us out and we all become dust? Or how can we work with our consciousness to facilitate the, a good transition to the next uh, uh, level? Yeah, I've thought, I've thought about that myself. And... Uh, it's a good point. Um, one thing that I really suggest to work with your consciousness and the sun is don't take it personally. <laughs> okay? That's first, you know, on the list. Because when the sun is going berserk like this 
and flaring and all this. There's so much energy. And there's so much, you know, activity. There's so much stuff. It is affecting human consciousness. There is no doubt about it. Uh, when I was looking at this data, I was looking at this data with uh, Bill Bison, you know, an engineer that has been recording the activities of the sun for the last 30 years, is an expert and so on. And it, he was, his jaw was on the ground. He was like, oh my God, I've never seen data like this. And the first thing he said is, this is going to affect human consciousness. So don't, you know, just flow with it. Try flowing with it. Just let go. Don't worry if everything you say is completely misinterpreted. Okay? Don't worry if you get yelled at and don't worry.